Beth has decided to throw herself out of her comfort zone and swing, climb and jump head first into a silk You got it. Yes! Hey! Oh, they haven't! Hello and welcome back to my channel. For the next 12 weeks, I'm going to be training as an aerial silks artist and challenging myself to perform a routine in front of an actual audience. Silks are acrobatic arts that generally take years to perfect. Performers seemingly effortlessly perform graceful balletic moves, gravity-defying shows of strength, and death-defying drops, all while hanging from a piece of fabric. To go from nothing to an actual routine, I'm gonna need a great coach. And luckily, I found Gemma Simpson from Adventure Circus in Perth. How did you start circus in the first place? I did a sport called question vaulting. One of my vaulting friends and I went to Amsterdam on a circus boot camp. I just felt completely at home when I saw all the silks. I was like, yay, I've arrived. Well, what's your favourite thing about teaching? The highs and lows that the student experiences. You experience all of that and you help people get past their fears and then seeing how proud they are of their achievements. I am pretty scared of any sporting activity. When I went to school, I was the youngest and the smallest and I was always picked last in any of the sports teams. So I knew that this was going to be a massive challenge for me and I was going to come across some barriers, not just physically, but mentally. It is the first circus training. Eek. The first lesson with Gemma, I was pretty nervous, but before I started, I had to learn a few of the fundamentals. The first was a Russian climb, which involves scooping the material under your foot and squishing it on top to make a kind of step, and then hopefully you can climb to the top of the silk. It was pretty tiring, I have to admit. The second was a footlock, which is a really fiddly wrap that ties the material around your foot so you can basically stand upright. Yeah! Whew. The third was a hip lock. A position that you can get into in a variety of ways and allows you to hang with the material wrapped around your leg and hip. And then there was the straddle. a little work to do. During class, I realised pretty quickly that I needed to work on my upper body strength. Now, I've always felt that I've got quite strong legs, but little baby T-Rex arms. And I always thought that was just the way I was built. But I've been assured that I can build some muscle. Now, being the big nerd that I am, I had to do some research and I found out some really interesting things. So the first thing I asked, Am I doomed to my baby T-Rex arms? Is strength genetic? It turns out, kind of yes. Our muscle strength and size has a limit. And what that limit is, is defined by a protein called myostatin. Once your muscles get to a certain level, the myostatin kicks in and prevents them from growing anymore. Now, some of us have loads of myostatin, which means we might not be able to build as much muscle. And some of us have less myostatin, which means you might be able to build a little more. But what happens if you have no myostatin? Well, check out the Belgian blue cow. No, he's not blue, but he is pretty beefy. 
had to say it, sorry. Now these cows look like this, without any fancy nutrition, without any extra exercise, and it really puzzled scientists until they found out that they were missing the GDF8 gene, which happens to create myostatin. Now there have been cases in mice, in dogs, and even humans. But I don't quite have the physique of the Belgian blue cow, but I don't think I have loads of myostatin either. I think it's probably about normal, and I think that's pretty good for circus. But I do still need to get stronger. What does science have to say about how muscles grow? So our body is fantastic at adapting to the things that we do regularly. When we put our muscles under stress, like lifting a heavy weight or hanging from a piece of material from the ceiling, then they become damaged. Now, I don't mean like pulling a muscle, that is too damaged, but tiny microscopic tears. Now, if you've ever wondered what your muscles look like under a microscope, have a look at this. I think it's really beautiful. When these tears appear, the body activates the immune system to repair the tears. And it's this act of repairing that makes the muscles grow. So, although putting your muscles under regular stress is essential for muscle growth, so is the repair portion of the cycle. So this evening, I'm gonna chill out, have a cup of tea, and grow some muscle. <laughs> Now, I wasn't just sitting around having cups of tea, I had to build my strength as well. And I did that by going to Workus. Get it? It was really cool that Adventure Circus provided work as free to support your growth when you sign up for any aerial class. And it really did help me build up some strength quickly and get some of those fundamentals down. Soon I was able to start working on actual tricks and Gemma had picked out a few moves to put in the choreography. The first thing I had to learn was Peter Pan, a trick that starts with a footlock. Reach up high. You're going to separate the silks, look down, make sure this is not crossed, and you're coming through, pop your foot on the silk, left hand up, and then you can have a little rest here, and then right down if you can, just trying to pop the palms here, come through, and then you can again, probably the find the silk needs pushed down, push it down, and up and through, and then you can choose what you do here, coming out. Lean back, big kick. Lean back, big kick. And then you can either go back to here or finish it off with a little quarter turn. So your hand comes up and through. Mm -hmm. And then you just twist back to the bit. And then it was my turn. <laughs> and then just pop it back and put it on, take your hands in. And then lean down long arm as much as you can. Pop your leg up and through. Like that. <laughs> Take a deep go again. Yeah. Long arms, push that silk down, push it down, push it down, push it down, and pull up and through. Straight leg at the back. Yeah! <laughs> Brilliant. Get your leg high, roll towards the curtain. And again. Keep going, keep going, that's it. And again. Flip. The length, the length, and then left arm up. Turn around, turn around, turn around. So swap your hand back. Put your hand on this side. <laughs> Can you maybe try stepping down? Stand on me, stand on me here. Oh, sorry, Gemma. <laughs> <laughs> Today is a big day. Gemma has challenged me to learn a drop for the end of my routine, and it's terrifying.
Gemma thought it would be a good idea to try climbing to the top of the silks to get used to the height. Enjoy holding on. Here, here, high. Oh my god. I'm going to do a fall from up there. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Help. <laughs> Let's just do the wraps. Like a couple of climbs. One of the greatest strengths of being involved in circus arts is it is an art form so it's very physical, it's very mental, it's quite demanding if you want it to be but there is no competitive element especially what we do in Perth so therefore you're only kind of competing against yourself. And circus is hard, like it it's hard. so hard and people who might think like they've got this self-doubt are stronger than they realise because they wouldn't mm. be here in the first place. I suddenly realised I was really scared of being at the top of the silk. Well done. So yeah, you need to be about there. Scary. It makes my arms go wobble there because it's scary. Like I feel my arms being like, oh no. It's just the mental thing of like, if I do drop. I was really freaking out at this point. I just didn't trust my strength to hold me at the top of the silks. I was really scared I was going to fall, but I had to keep on going. happier that that major element is there like I think I have all elements of the routine I can't put them together yet but it feels so much better to know that I can can do all those elements <sighs> Phew. I smiled the whole way home after achieving that drop now I know I had to perfect it but it really was a massive deal for me to just get over my fear and just do it and I realized this was partially down to the amazing supportive community that Gemma and the teachers had fostered at Adventure Circus. 
every achievement was celebrated, even if it was a little ungainly. I don't just think about it as my friendship, like this is my family, like that is what the circus is. Mm. You create this massive thing that everyone's got a part in. And the final rehearsals came round quickly. And then came the day of the showcase. Now we did a dress rehearsal first and I couldn't resist strutting around town in my ridiculous clown outfit. I'm really nervous. I'm hiding under the chairs to be nervous. <laughs> so you don't have to be nervous in front of everyone else? Do you think everyone here is nervous? <laughs> no. <laughs> Some people are really good. <laughs> Break the leg though. No, please, no. <laughs> good enough. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Beth has decided to throw herself out of her comfort zone and swing, climb, and jump head first into a silk Here we go. <laughs> Started well. I got the audience on site. Peter Pan going okay, although a little messy. I wobble and I feel like something feels wrong, but I'm not sure what, so I keep on going. Now I realise. I forgot a quarter turn and the silk is completely tangled around my foot. Everything is going in slow motion and I think I'm stuck. Someone's going to have to get a ladder and help me down. I try to kick the tangled silks off my feet for what feels like an agonisingly long amount of time. I'm free! but totally knackered. I'm in position for the final drop. I can do it. Let's go! What's meant to happen is this, after which I wrap myself up in the silks and hang in a beautiful stag position and flick and drop for a fantastic dramatic ending. That didn't happen. I hung around a bit, not sure what to do, and then slid back down. Okay, so it didn't go how I wanted to, and if I'm being honest, I might have cried in a broom cupboard afterwards where nobody could see me. But first of all, I have to say that I am really proud of myself. I got over some big mental and physical hurdles. And although at the time it really did suck, it's been one of the biggest learning curves I've had on this channel so far. 
even though Gemma makes it a priority to make training low pressure. Because of this video, because of the time schedule, I did put that pressure on. And as it got closer to the showcase, I tried harder, I put that pressure on, and I think ultimately it exhausted me. It overwhelmed me and it got in the way of me doing the best I could have. Some skills just take years to master and learning is messy. You have to go at your own pace. So I am not ending this video saying jump into that skill that you want to learn with intensity, but rather take time, build into it. Focus on the little goals of each session and don't worry about the overall big goal. It will come with time. That certainly seems to work better for me. But I have to say, I really loved circus. So I am going to keep this skill going. So hopefully in a year's time, I'll be able to show you the progress I've made from a year of low pressure training. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do like and subscribe. Once again, big thanks to my patrons. If it wasn't for the patrons, these videos would not happen. So thank you so much. And you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Beth Roars. And also, please do check out Adventure Circus. I've put all the links down in the description. It is a great hobby to take up. See you in the next one. Bye.